Hello everybody, welcome to Webby on Cars. Uh, in today's video, we're having a look at the 2022 BMW 230 Coupe. Uh, if you've seen my other videos recently, I had the M240i Coupe, uh, which it, funnily enough, was in exactly the same color, uh, Brooklyn Gray, as this car. Um, I absolutely love that car, one of my favorite cars, certainly of this year so far. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how the 230 compares to that car. Um, this one's got the two litre turbocharged petrol engine as opposed to a three litre. Uh, and this one, in a being traditional BMW, is rear-wheel drive. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this one compares when we take it out on the road. So I've been driving this car for the week, uh, thoroughly enjoying it. So I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts and opinions on the car. We'll have a look around it, obviously on the outside and the inside. We'll take it for a drive, obviously, um, and then I'll tell you my thoughts at the end of the video and what I think of the car. Um, so let's start on the outside. Let me show you around some of the features on the outside of the car. Uh, as I said, the colour is called Brooklyn Grey. Uh, it's exactly the same colour I had on the M240i a little while ago. Uh, and I do actually quite like this colour. But as I said in that previous video, I'm not really a big fan of like these black accents at the front. Um, and this grey, yeah, it's definitely grey, this grey section down the side. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, just, it's just not me, I don't like it. Um, and the fact that it's grey around the side and black around the front is a little bit odd too. Um, if you're going to do one colour, do it around both sides of the car. I'm not quite sure why BMW have done that. But anyway, that's just a personal thing. You might like it, I don't know. Um, if I was going to buy this car, I'd get it in black to hide all those sort of two-tone bits, um, just to make it look one colour. Uh, anyway, um, in terms of styling, uh, I think it's a fantastic looking car. I do like things like this sort of raised hump on the bonnet, gives it a bit of sort of aggressive look, um, sort of muscly sort of look if you like. Um, we've got BMW's fantastic LED headlights. Um, I do like the grill. It's not obviously the new style that you get on the M3 and the M4, so it's more traditional. Uh, it's got the active shutters, so it opens and closes depending on if the engine needs to warm up or cool down. Um, but actually the front is sort of fairly angular. Um, I think it's actually quite a good looking car. Better looking in the new M2 that's coming out soon. Um, yeah, not a big fan of that. Um, so this particular car has got a couple of options, as you'd imagine. BMW like you to spend a lot more money on the options. Um, starting price for this car is around $78,000, $79,000, but you could easily get it up to sort of eighty-five, ninety dollars uh, if you went a bit mad with the options list. Uh, this one has got the enhancement pack, so it gives us these rather lovely uh, black 19-inch alloy wheels. It includes a cost of metallic paint, so you can choose whatever paint finish you want as well, uh, which is very good. Uh, and also you get the sunroof. And all that is only $3,000, which actually is exceptional value from BMW, because normally they'd probably charge you three grand just for the sunroof. Um, so to package that all up for three grand, I think it's actually pretty reasonable. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see BMW sort of doing something that kind of encourages you to spend more money, but it's stuff you'd want anyway, because you're gonna want a different paint finish, you probably do want the sunroof. And those 19 inch alloy wheels just really finish off the car, particularly with the contrast to this Brooklyn, Brooklyn Gay. Brooklyn grey paint finish. So it has a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, coming around the side of the car, um, this has got the door handles, again, like the M240i that I had, but also similar to the four series Grand Coupe I had earlier in the year. Um, I do actually quite like them, they're sort of fairly sort of flush with the door. Um, I guess it's good for aerodynamics, but it's also good for the aesthetics of the car. It makes it look really, really nice as well. Um, let's come and have a look around the back of the car, and I can show you some of the detailing around there as well. Right, so coming around to the back of the car then, um, I really love this sort of three-quarter angle uh, from the side of the car. Um, it sort of accentuates the sort of big fat wheel arches, uh, the line that comes down from the side of the car, uh, and also these 3D LED tail lights, which I think look absolutely fantastic. Uh, coming around a little bit further, uh, we've got the grey plastic that was down the side of the doors continues around to the back of the car as well. Um, we've got this sort of pretend diffuser, if you like, uh, twin tail pipes either side, which is a nice design cue. Um, the boot lid sort of comes up to almost like mimic like a rear spoiler, so that's quite a good look as well. There's actually a fairly decent amount of space in the boot. Um, you get 390 litres in here as standard, um, and then you can fold the seats down as well, so you can actually increase that and put longer objects through. Um, so for a two-door coupe, it's actually quite practical. The, wide, the opening is pretty wide, and then the boot sort of extends out further towards the actual outside, um, towards the sort of outside panels of the car. So the actual boot space is pretty practical. Um, 
so yeah you could use this daily driver you can go down to bunnings and get stuff from there um yeah it's actually a practical but fun car and before we get started on the inside of the car um, if you're enjoying the video give it a thumbs up uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell to find out when the next video goes live um, this year's been a fantastic year for the channel so i want to keep it growing so yeah do me a favor subscribe hit the notification bell watch more videos share them with your mates um, and obviously help me grow the channel so we can get some more fantastic cars uh, for me to review for you um, but now let's have a look at the inside of the car and some of the features inside all right so let's have a look inside then uh, keyless entry is standard as you would imagine um, the interior i really really like and it is very sort of plain and simple but it's also very classy as well um, even things like sort of the blue stitching down here on the doors gives it a little bit of color which i think is lovely um, these leather and suede sports seats are fantastic they are so comfortable um, so the suede is in the middle uh, leather is on the outside plenty of bolster in here to give you lots of support you can also see there's like a blue fleck just going through the alcantara uh, which i think looks really really nice i'd actually have these instead of leather seats i reckon um because the alcantara is sort of quite grippy it doesn't get sort of the temperature changes that you get with leather uh, i think it's really really nice uh, i would definitely choose this interior uh, over a leather myself um, but let's jump in let's have a look at some of the features uh, inside the cabin uh, i can show you what's around all right so this is the view from the driver's seat uh, traditional sort of bmw steering wheel it's not flat bottomed or anything uh, it's got the little sort of m logo there uh, you'll see this has got a heated steering wheel this has also got the comfort pack uh, so we get the heated steering wheel heated front seats uh, and also lumbar support as well so that's a nice little finishing touch as well um, the buttons are there on the steering wheel for your adaptive cruise control uh, over this side is for like your um, like your volume for your radio the little wheel to adjust um, your tracks and bits and pieces so it's pretty standard stuff in front of that let's just have a quick look zoom in a little bit uh, so we've got the nice digital instrument cluster there as well that's really really easy to read um, especially when you're driving along uh, apart from the fact that you can't really see because the light is reflecting on some of the dash there uh, as you can see it's, there's, a, there's a lot sort of going on there um, you've got like your, your speedo around there digital speedo um, fuel gauge over there ranging your tank uh, your fuel economy over that side and your rev counter going around the outside there as well it tells us uh, we're in comfort mode because that's the default starting mode for this car um, so it's actually pretty sort of comprehensive but fairly easy to read as you're driving along in the middle like i say we've got this huge infotainment display uh, it gets built in sat nav but you've also got wireless apple carplay um, so for iphone users like myself it's absolutely fantastic uh, and it is full screen as well which is great um, across the middle here we've got all the air conditioning controls which are really really simple to use uh, you've also got hazards and in that one there is where you can adjust your preferences for all your driver safety aids uh, you can also turn them off which i do like um, press that button for about three seconds deactivates all your safety stuff um, so it stops it trying to change lanes and do random things while you're driving along which i um i always turn off uh, underneath uh, the one to eight they're not radio presets anymore uh, if you've ever had a bmw before you'll know that they're favorite buttons so not only can you store radio stations you could store a phone number uh, or even you can do things like i've done that number eight uh, for the sound menu so if ever you want to adjust the speakers you can actually just press the number eight and it will take you straight to the sound menu so you can adjust your bass and treble and all that sort of thing for your speakers um, which is actually quite cool and then number seven i've put down for the trip computer again it just makes things easy to find uh, with your shortcuts uh, something you'll find on every bmw to be fair uh, i think it's a really really good idea uh, underneath that we've got this sort of little cubby hole here uh, you've got a nice lid so you can hide everything under but if we open it up uh, just under there you've got a wireless charging pad for your mobile phone uh, you've also got a usb and then we've got a couple of cup holders and under there is another 12 volt power socket uh, so there's plenty of options there for charging your devices uh, in terms of keys uh, it's just a normal sort of bmw key that you get on pretty much every other car basically uh, so there's nothing sort of different um, you've got a little sort of m sport coloring there on the side which is actually quite nice so yeah it's a pretty standard key for bmw 
Um, they've had it around for a few years now, so nothing too fancy about that. Uh, coming down here around sort of center console, again, if you've been in a BMW recently or you've got one, uh, you'll recognize this very easily. Um, over the left hand side, that's all your controls of your infotainment seat system. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. Um, you've got the big dial as well, and you can draw on the top of it for putting directions in. Uh, but like most things, it is voice controlled as well. Um, so you can just use your voice to um, input, input sort of address if you're sat nav or make phone calls, that type of thing. Um, H-Speed ZF automatic gearbox. Um, BMW always do these and they are fantastic. Um, the little park button there is quite handy actually. Um, you've then got buttons there to turn off your traction control and your parking sensors. Uh, that one will deactivate the stop start system. Uh, so if you don't like it cutting out traffic lights, uh, that's the button for you. And uh, then we've got our drive modes here as well. So sport, comfort, and eco. Uh, comfort is the default mode uh, that it will start in every time you start the car. But then you can obviously adjust it to a different setting if you prefer. Um, I quite like this sort of like, I don't know what they call it actually, sort of like a hexa hexagonal aluminium finish, I think it is, or something like that. Um, either way, quite nice, don't mind that. A uh, bit more storage under the center armrest, uh, and also a USB-C charging point, which is nice to see. Um, but yeah, as we look around the cabin, it's actually a really nice sort of place to be. You have got a couple of seats back there, uh, probably only for small adults like myself or kids. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice, nice place. It's not sort of like too much going on. A lot of cars these days is too many buttons and bits and pieces, but it's just a nice understated interior. I think understated is probably a good word for it. Um, it's just a really, really nice place to be. Uh, I've also got the sunroof, which I mentioned earlier, is part of that enhancement pack. Uh, lets heaps of light in, as you can see. Uh, it's actually a decent size. Uh, so yeah, I really like the sunroof in this car. Right, now I'm gonna show you how to get into the back of this car. So the front seat is actually my driving position. Uh, so there's a lever on the back of the seat, which you lift up, you tilt it forward, and then the seat will actually move itself forward electrically for you to get into the back of the car. So let's climb in and let's see how we get on. Uh, so the space isn't too bad in here. So, oh, so we're in and then we just pull the seat back. So that position there. And there you go, I've actually got quite a decent amount of leg space there. Uh, that's not too bad at all. Uh, if we have a look around then, um, so it's only a two seater, as you can imagine, there's not enough room uh, for three people back here. You've got a little bit of a cubby sort of area there, but you can put bits and pieces. Uh, it is nice to see we've actually got air vents back here, and we've got a third zone of climate control. So you can actually adjust your own temperatures uh, back here separately for passengers. Uh, and then we've also got two USB-C fast charging points. Uh, so rear passengers are actually really well catered for. The only thing it doesn't really give you back here in the back is much headspace. I'm only five foot six, so I'm actually, my head is actually touching the ceiling just about. Um, so like I said a minute ago, it's okay for small adults and kids, but anybody taller than me would struggle to get in the back of this thing or at least be comfortable. Um, so you've got plenty of amenities, uh, but it's only really for short people. Right, so some other bits and pieces we've got in the back. Uh, we've got the child seat um, isofix mounting points. We've got a fold down armrest, which has also got a couple of cup holders in there as well, uh, which is handy. Uh, you've also got this little button up here, which if you pull that down, brings that down, but actually extends through to the boot. So if you've got a longer item that you want to come through from the boot into the car, you can still do that, but also carry two passengers in the back at the same time, uh, which is actually quite handy. So now we're gonna actually take the 230 for a bit of a drive. Um, wanna sort of see what the handling is like. Um, also things like road noise, how quiet it is, um, and just a sort of general driving opinion overall. Um, so let's do that bit next and see what we think to the 230. Now I've changed things up a little bit for some filming inside the car. Uh, I always used to use my GoPro, um, just because they're always handy. Um, yeah, you can mount them in the car, add your wireless microphone and stuff like that. Um, but I recently updated my phone. I've got an iPhone 14 Pro now. Um, so I'm actually using the front facing camera um, to actually film this section of the video. So I'll be interested to know what you think of the video quality. 
because uh, some people were saying that some of the filming was a bit dark um, and they couldn't really see sort of inside the car properly. So let me know your thoughts on this section of the video. Um, yeah, sort of the picture quality, is it, is it bright enough, can you see inside the car? Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to know your thoughts and opinions on that. Let me know. So first impressions then. Uh, it's a lovely place to be in here, it's a really nice interior. Um, in terms of driving, it's pretty quiet. Uh, the ride is firm-ish, um, but that's kind of standard with BMWs, um, so that's not really a big surprise. Um, but like I say, it's, it's pretty quiet. Uh, you don't get too much noise coming in from the cabin. Uh, I do like this sunroof, it lets um, an awful lot of light in, so it makes it nice and uh, sort of light and airy inside the car. As with a lot of cars, uh, the gearbox or the drive mode settings start off in comfort, uh, but you can obviously cycle into eco or sport depending on uh, whatever your sort of driving style is for that day. As I mentioned, the car's a two litre turbo with 190 kilowatt. According to the figures, zero to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour is 5.8 seconds. So it's not blisteringly quick, but it's certainly plenty enough um, that if you need to get out of trouble, need to overtake, um, or you just want to go and have a bit of fun, fun around some twisty roads, uh, this car has certainly got enough power to keep you entertained. As I mentioned at the beginning, this car, with a few extras, um, I'd say it's just under $80,000, uh, so about 78 ish um, for the standard car, but once you add on you know, a couple of options, uh, this car comes out at just under $83,000. Um, which sounds like a lot of money for like a mid, mid sort of level spec car but everything's getting so expensive these days um, you know the new Golf R is $80,000 or thereabouts and to me that's an awful lot of money for a bloody Volkswagen Golf it's just a hatchback at the end of the day um, yeah it's a fast hatchback but Jesus $80,000 for a Golf um, the world's gone mad hasn't it this car actually suits itself really well to a lot of different driving styles. It could be your daily driver, you could go and have some fun and some twisties, but you could also do a long journey on it. And you wouldn't feel uncomfortable when you get out, the seats are really comfortable and supportive. Um, you've got things like your adaptive cruise control, which is obviously nice when you're going down a freeway. Um, it's just a bit of a do-everything car. Whether you choose this over the 240, which is the three litre turbo with the all-wheel drive system, probably depends on personal preference or maybe how much you want to spend on a car because there's quite a big price jump when you get to that 240 um, you're up to around about a sort of 108 110,000 K uh, dollars uh, depending on sort of what spec you choose so you could be looking at yeah sort of $25,000 more than this and that's an awful lot of money um, you know you can go and buy a second runaround car for daily driving during the week and still have this as your fun car at the weekend um, Servicing costs aren't too bad. As with any other car, you can buy a, a prepaid service plan with BMW, which is really, really nice. Um, the fuel economy is actually pretty good too. Uh, it's rated at 6.4 litres per 100. Uh, and with a 52 litre fuel tank, you can actually get some decent range out of the tank. Um, again, depending on your driving style, you could be looking at six or 700 Ks, um, which is actually pretty decent for this type of car. And I have tried out the different driving modes for this gearbox. And I'd probably just leave it in comfort most of the time, to be honest, because it's a nice, it's a nice thing to use every day. It's not one of these cars you have to drive it hard to to get it to behave properly, basically. Um, yeah, it's just a, a sort of a really nice place to be. In terms of sound from the exhaust, like a lot of cars these days, it's sort of filtered, um, and most of the sound that you hear inside the cabin actually comes through the speakers. Um, it's not an unpleasant sound, it kind of sounds fairly realistic. Um, so it's not terrible, but you know it's not coming from the exhaust, you know it's kind of piped into the speakers. Um, it's a shame really, because, yeah, it'd be nice to have a bit of authenticity to the sound, and that's not aimed at BMW, that's all manufacturers, you know, they've got to um, toe the line in terms of all the regulations that get put in place these days. So I've jumped on the freeway now, because I want to see what the noise is like when you get to sort of freeway speeds. You know, is there any noise coming from the cabin in terms of sort of just tyre noise or road noise in general? Uh, also wind, wind as well. 
So yeah, I thought I'd try that out and see what it's like. You can hear a little bit of wind, but I think that's just because it is a bit of a windy day today. But generally it's actually quite quiet. I have closed the sunroof obviously, because um, you probably wouldn't have heard me much if I had the sunroof open going down the freeway. Uh, but I've also shut the blind as well, because the sun came out and it was getting in my eyes. So I guess the question is, would you buy this out of any of the other engine versions in the 2 Series Coupe range? Because you can get sort of the, the lower powered 2 litre, or you can go up to the 3 litre. So this sits sort of bang in the middle of those two really. Um, and I'd have to say it's probably the sweet spot in the range. Because you get a bit more oomph than you get in the base model. Uh, you know, 190 kilowatt is, is enough for most people without sort of getting yourself into you know, sort of trouble with the 3 litre. But it gives you more than the base model. Uh, the base model is like 135, 140 kilowatts, somewhere around there. Um, so it gives you a nice power bump from the base model. So yeah, I would definitely say this is the sweet spot in the range. I'd probably add a little bit more in terms of equipment if I was going to buy one of these. Like I say, I do like these leather and suede sports seats. But I'd want something like the upgraded sound system, I think. Because uh, I do like my music. Um, but the rest of the car, I think the spec is actually really nice. In terms of safety, every car gets the same sort of safety stuff these days. Um, you know, blind spot monitor, adaptive cruise, autonomous braking, lane keeping aid. Uh, it's all becoming the norm in pretty much every car you buy nowadays. Um, you only tend to sort of really notice if one car does something really different to everybody else or if they've got something missing that, you know, is the norm. Um, so yeah, safety is becoming kind of like, it's just there now, isn't it? Um, it almost more becomes of how much of it can you turn off. Because um, I'm one of those people that, you know, when I learned to drive, you know, when I was younger, we didn't have all these safety stuff, didn't have sensors, didn't have cameras, um, you know, didn't have blind spot monitor and stuff like that. We actually sort of, you know, knew how to drive, so to speak. Whereas nowadays, everybody wants all these, you know, sort of safety items. And don't get me wrong, they are good, but I think a lot of people rely on it too much. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of people should learn to drive rather than learn to rely on all the safety stuff. Just my personal opinion, of course. Um, so that brings us to an end to the video for the BMW 230 Coupe. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below for me in the comment section uh, and I'll answer all your questions as soon as I can. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell to find out when the next video uh, goes live. Uh, also check out all my other BMW content, which I'll leave a link uh, in the description for you as well. Um, so that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.